These misgivings are shared by Cromwell's colleague, Sir Thomas Fairfax. He's the man at the head of the army. Sir Thomas Fairfax is a war hero, famed throughout the land as one of the most outstanding commanders of the Civil War. As Lord General of the New Model Army, he's led Parliament to many victories. He's been instrumental in defeating the Royalist forces and capturing the King. Now, the final battle of the Civil War is being fought out not in the field, but in the chambers and corridors of Whitehall. Fairfax has overseen Cromwell's rise within the New Model Army and counts him among his most trusted friends. And so what was Cromwell's personal relationship with Fairfax like? To begin with, extremely good. Um, and there are lots of personal letters between them. And uh, Cromwell always does the courtesy of handwriting them. He, he, by, by the middle of the 1640s, he's using secretaries, except when he writes to his family, immediate family, and when he writes to Fairfax, which I think is a sign of respect. Or intimacy, even. Uh, even of intimacy. But as Cromwell's power increases, Fairfax becomes unnerved. We know he attends the first commissioners' meeting, but by January the 11th, he's notable by his absence. When it comes to the decision to put the king on trial, Fairfax is irresolute. Um, it's not that he's opposed to it, he simply can't bring himself to really go, go through with it. And he, he withdraws from, from the trial. But of course, lots of people that have been Cromwell's close friends and allies through the 1640s are getting cold feet at that point. If Fairfax himself seems to lack resolution, his wife, Anne, is a force to be reckoned with. She had followed her husband into battle against the Royalists and had even been taken prisoner. She's fearless. At heart, they're both Presbyterians, moderate Puritans. They do desire spiritual reform, but not at the cost of the king's life. Fairfax's absence is a huge blow for Cromwell. I mean, personally, as well as politically, they'd made a really good team. Um, and it's obviously terrible for army morale if the head of the army is not seen to be supporting them. I don't think Fairfax has quite the providential mindset that Cromwell has, and he's not prepared to go through on the deal or no deal scenario that is ultimately the uh, trial of Charles I. And he has almost nothing to do with it, and he washes his hands of it. Moderate Puritan MPs expelled from Parliament implore Fairfax to take action to stop the trial. This is a copy of a letter written to Fairfax by one of the excluded MPs, Ned Harley. In it, he condemns the army's actions and begs Fairfax to intervene. Their evils for want of your prohibition will become your guilt, he writes. He goes on, a general's words cannot be other than commands. Fairfax is their general after all, so why does he not command the army to stop the trial? Fairfax has serious clout. If he wanted to, he probably could have stopped this. As Brandon prepares the axe, the Dutch ambassadors make one last attempt to save the king's life. They visit the head of the army, Sir Thomas Fairfax. Fairfax has been steadfastly against any form of regicide, but now he concedes the king should face the executioner. He tells the ambassadors he would rather protect many lives than one, even if it's the king's. <laughs> <laughs> 